It was late by the time I left the Kowalskis and the streets were empty. My footsteps echoed in the darkness. I had the feeling I was being followed. Somewhere in the shadows, someone was watching me. Someone I'd been trailing for 20 years. This is East Side Beat, a big city story of the one thrilling moment in a man's life that can only be called High Adventure. is High Adventure, the telling of strange stories of strong men living the greatest and most exciting moment of a lifetime, their moment of high adventure. And on the agenda at this meeting is a story called East Side Beat, the author and director, Elliot Drake. And to tell it, here's the man who lived it, Bill Harrigan. Bill? August 16th was just like any other day. It had been hot the night before and me and the wife had taken a mattress up on the roof. It was even hot up there and we didn't get much sleep. Walking to the subway the next morning, there was still some heat in the sidewalks left over from yesterday, and by the time I reached the newsstand at the corner, the sweat was trickling down my back under my shirt. Mrs. O'Leary handed me my paper, and the headline said something about the hottest August 15th in the history of the Weather Bureau. The subway was crowded like it always is, and I couldn't get a seat. It was all right as long as we was moving, but every time we stopped at a station, the heat closed in like an oven. I was glad when we got to 116th Street. Up on the street, it was still hot, but at least I didn't have somebody's elbow in my back. I even began to whistle as I walked the two blocks to the precinct station. Hi, Sully. Oh, must be 8 o'clock. Right on the nose. Lieutenant sets his watch by you. <laughs> the 39th precinct is now officially open for business. Morning, Dom. Oh, hello, Bill. You're in early. Hey, got the paper? Yeah. How'd the Dodgers do last night? Want to borrow a nickel? Come on, come on, give it over. Why are cops so cheap? What are you complaining about? You got more money in the mayor. Sure. Come on. <laughs> Would you... Anything happened last night? Eh, nothing much. Where's the log? Hmm? I said, what? Well, I'll get it. Well, here it is. Ah, lost to the bill. Three to two. When are they going to get started? Please, they got to win today or they're out vagrancy, of it Vagrancy, vagrancy, loitering, pickpocket. Hmm. Alice Tompkins. Yeah. What'd they do with her? Huh? Oh, fooled her off for the night or something. Do you have anything on her? No, not much. A couple of watches, Bottle. Mm -hmm. Why don't you sit down and relax? And the world knows you come on duty at eight. Everyone goes into high. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Wonder what kind of desk the mayor has. Hmm? I said. All right, who's the funny man? What? What's the idea? I don't know. Just note. What note? Don't give me that. You know what I mean. Yeah, let me see it. Get out of here. Let me see it, Bill. Get off my trail or you'll get it, copper. Signed, the Kowalski killer. Somebody around here ought to be in Bellevue instead of on the force. Hey, you better get out of town, Bill. I'll get somebody's badge for this. Lieutenant wants to see you, Bill. What? Oh, okay. You leave that note on my desk, Marquetta. I'll take it to handwriting. Knuckleheads. Morning, Lieutenant. Morning, Bill. Come on in. Lester said you wanted to see me. That's right. Sit down. Well, I guess you know what today is. Well, yeah, sort of. I want to congratulate you, Bill. <laughs> Twenty years is a long time to serve your city. Oh, I don't know. And you've done it well. Yes, I'm proud to know you, Bill. Get off it, Lieutenant. Oh, I mean every word of it. Yeah, I, I guess it is a long time at that. I'll say it is. I remember when I got my patrolman's badge. We didn't even have traffic lights in those days. <laughs> You've seen a lot of changes in this town. Yeah. Now I just want to be around for the next 20. That's what I want to talk to you about, Bill. What do you mean, Lieutenant? How long have we known each other? Six years? Seven? About seven, I guess. Been pretty good friends, haven't we? Well, sure. This isn't easy for me. Come on, Lieutenant. Let's have it. I flunked my last physical, didn't I? Uh, not the last one, Bill. You flunked it three years ago, but, uh, well, it just kind of got lost in the shuffle. Oh. And now that I've reached 20 years, you want me to retire. Is that it? Yeah, I guess that's it. But I can pass that physical. Why, I wasn't even trying. Just give me a couple of weeks to get Afraid in shape. I and... can't do that. Bill. Why not? Doc says it's the pump. Nothing to worry about, as long as you're careful. There's so much but... to do. You're making it hard for me. The Kowalski case. I always hoped I'd crack that one. 
There'll be others along to take your place. Yeah, yeah, but you know how this business is. Sometimes a case is broken just because some smart cop remembers a little detail that happened 20 years ago. I know. Nobody on the force knows as much about the Kowalski kid as I do. No. Just let me stay around. I'll... Sorry, Bill. Yeah. I'll have Lesser type up the papers for you. Meanwhile, we'll give you enough to keep you busy. Lieutenant Wade. Yes, Lesser. Okay, we'll put a man on it. And Lesser, come into my office when Bill leaves. <laughs> Woman over 135th just saw a monkey on her fire escape. You want to take it? You don't have to if you don't want it. No, I'll take it. Sorry it had to happen this way, Bill, but you've got a lot to look forward to. Your wife, your daughter, her kids. Yeah. Thanks, Lieutenant. Hey, Bill, did you see the note on your... Shut up, jerk! Well, what's eating him? Funny how you can go on year after year putting things off till tomorrow, and all of a sudden there isn't any tomorrow. I remember the day the Kowalski call came in. I was just a young punk, new on the force, and that was my first big case. At first, she was just reported missing, but later we found the little girl hidden in the tall grass of an empty lot over on the east side. Both her arms were broken, and her body was so brutally beaten that the father couldn't identify it. Looking down on her, I thought of my own little girl. I went off by myself and was sick to my stomach. I've seen a lot of them since then, but that was my first, and I never forgot it. We searched that neighborhood for months, questioned hundreds of suspects, turned those tenements inside out, but we never came up with a clue. Usually in cases like that, it isn't long before the killer shows himself by knocking off somebody else. But that's what made this case different. We were never able to tie it in with another killing, and the brass decided it wasn't the work of a maniac. Somebody had had it in for that little girl, and they deliberately murdered her, and then disappeared in the noise and confusion of the east side. Finally, the way work was piling up, they had to take the men off the case, and it was written into the record as unsolved. But I never forgot it. And from then on, every job I went out on, I was working on the Kowalski case, too. Got to be the stand and gag around the station, but I kept telling myself, someday, someday I'm going to show those punks what it takes to be a real cop. And now it was too late. Too late because I let all my tomorrow slip away. I was climbing a four-floor walk up on 135th Street to chase a monkey they should have sent the dog warden after. 4A, 4B, 4C, 4D, yeah. Pew. Joint stinks. Lights out. Must be a bell here someplace. Yeah. Yeah. Sergeant Harrigan, 39th Precinct. So? You reported seeing a monkey on your fire escape. Oh. Oh, yeah, come in. Where's the fire escape? What? Turn that thing down, will you? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Turn that thing down, sure. <coughs> that better? Yeah. And the old heart desires. Where's the fire escape? Oh, what's your hurry? You want a drink? No. Great big policeman don't want to drink. Where's the fire escape? What? Oh, yeah, fire escape. The other room, I'll show you. Place of mess. Mess? Ain't been up long, you know. Usually very neat. <laughs> knobs broke. Had to get a fix someday. You fix knobs? No. Place of mess. I know. That window? Yeah. It's hot in here. Shut the window when I saw the monkey. I don't like monkeys. Like dogs, cats. Don't like monkeys. You like monkeys? Not here now. What's your name? Flo. Flo what? What do you want to know, Flo? I got to make a report. Flo what? I don't want no trouble. What do you got to make a report for? You sure you saw a monkey? Sure I saw what a monkey. What color what was it? Say, I don't like what you're saying. It was brown, it was yelling and screaming. That's what I thought. Why don't you go to bed and sleep it off? You cheap, flat foot. Tell me I saw him. I know when I see yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look again, you dumb ninny. Look again. I tell you, he's out there. I saw him. Shut up, I... shut up. I'll look again. Just stop screaming. We'll have the whole force up here. Go on, look. I, I don't like monkeys. I, I know you. you like dogs, you like cats, but you don't like monkeys. I'll look, I'll look. 
Maybe I am getting too old. What? Nothing. You see him? No. He must have gone away. Maybe he went up the fifth floor. What? I said maybe he went upstairs. Oh. No, he went up. Wait a minute. Hey, there he is. See? I told you. Told you I saw a monkey. Where is he? On the next landing. Well, go get him. Take him away. I don't... Shut up. I'll get him. Come on. Come on. Give up. Come on. Take it easy. Take it easy. That's it, my boy. Take it easy. Now, come on. That's right. Don't be afraid, Papa. Everything's going to be... Say, he's been hurt. What's the matter? He's all blood. What? What would you say? He's been hurt. Oh, poor little thing. I don't like to see nothing hurt. Must have been somebody's pet. Huh? He's got a collar on. Yeah. Where's your phone? Who are you going to call? The SPCA. They'll know how to handle this. I ain't got a phone. Where'd you call us from? You ain't going to leave me alone with that monkey. I told you I don't like... Will you stop that screaming? I'll take him over to Mr. Mickey. He got lots of animals. He'll know what to do. All right, all right. I'll show you the way. Just let's get it over with. Here, come on, little fella. There. Nothing to be afraid of now. When I picked the little fellow up, he was shivering and he tried to get away. I put him inside my coat and he tucked his head under my arm and stopped struggling. Then the woman led us downstairs and out on the street. The monkey's tail was hanging out of my coat and before we'd gone half a block, a crowd of kids was yelling and jumping all around us. We went out to the avenue and up to 136th Street. Then about halfway up the block, the woman turned and went into a junkyard. A big dog jumped out from behind what was left of an old car. His barking scared off the kids, but the woman kept walking. I never saw such a collection of junk, fenders, wheels, mattresses, old furniture thrown all over the place, and there must have been 10 or 15 cats and dogs jumping up on us and wagging their tails. The monkey started chattering under my coat, but I hung on to him. There was a shack at the back of the yard, and the woman made straight for it. Here, here, now, what's all the commotion here? Oh, good morning, Paul. Boys, girls, I'm ashamed of you. Now, that's no way to greet a guest. Hello, Mr. Meeker. Go on with you now. I'm ashamed of you. Ah, no, it's too late to say you're sorry now, George. I thought I'd taught you better manners than that. Go on now, go on. <laughs> You'll have to excuse my friends. They, they meant no harm. Uh, this is Sergeant... Uh, what'd you say your name was? Harrigan. Yeah, Sergeant Harrigan. Sergeant, I hope no one has been complaining about my friends again. No, nothing like that. You see, we thought maybe you could doctor up this monkey. A monkey? Yeah, he was up on this lady's fire escape, and the station sent me over to catch him. Oh, you, you didn't hurt him? No, he must have got hit by a car or something. When I, well, uh, by all I... means, I'll be glad to help. Just bring him in the office. <laughs> Poor little thing. I hate to see dumb animals. Sergeant, huh? I like to call them little friends. Oh. Uh, what were you saying? I, uh, I hate to see uh, little friends get hurt. I know what you mean. Hey, you got a regular zoo here. Please, Sergeant. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Now, now, my pretties, we must be quiet. We wouldn't want to disturb our patient, would we? <laughs> I, I, I better cover their cages. <laughs> Ain't he cute? He's nuts. Sure, but he's cute. I kind of mother him along, so his clothes for him. Mother him, huh? Yeah. Who is he? Been here for years. <laughs> Just goes to show you. I thought I knew everyone in this precinct. You didn't know me. Uh, now, there we are. Now, let's take a look at our patient. He's being awful quiet. I think he's dead. Now, let me see. Uh, put him on the table. No, his heart's still beating. Did he pass out? Probably lost a lot of blood. Oh, your shirt's a mess, Harrigan. That's okay. Leave it with me tonight. I'll wash it for I you. I don't... Hey, what are you doing, Maker? Uh, I, I read in a book our little friends have been known to revive each other by breathing in each other's mouths. Oh, that, that, you see? He, he's breathing more regularly now. Well, I'll now be... Now we can a... take care of his injuries. Yeah. What do you think's wrong with him? Well, I, I can't tell what else. But so far, both his arms are broken. I waited till I was sure the monkey was going to be all right. Then I left him with Meeker and ran to the nearest call box. The streets were crowded with morning shoppers, but I don't remember even seeing them. All I could see was a picture that had been burned in my mind 20 years ago. The picture of the little Kowalski girl with her two broken arms hanging limp at her sides. Sure. 
shoulder. Lieutenant Wade. This is Harrigan, Lieutenant. Oh, yes, Bill. Did you get that monkey? I'll say, and listen. Had both its arms broken. Did you call the SPCA? Don't you see? What? The Kowalski girl had both her arms broken, too. Wait a minute, Bill. We never could tie the Kowalski case up with anything else. Maybe this is Take it. Take it easy. Huh? What makes you think there's a connection between the two? This is the repeat case with the look of... The monkey was probably hit It's by impossible. Truck. Why? If both his arms were broken by a truck, it had been hit on the head, too. I got something there. It must tie together. You got any suspects? I don't know. The woman, maybe. What woman? The one that sent in the complaint. She's a lush with a big mother complex. Real dog with a lousy temper. Besides, the monkey threw her. Who is she? I don't know. Never saw her before. Uh-huh. What do you say, Lieutenant? Can I follow it out? Uh... You sit tight, Bill. I'll send Marquette over right away. Why? Oh, you know what the doc said. I want you to take it I'm easy. I'm still on the force, aren't I? Well, yes, but... I'll take it easy when my papers go through. Till then, let me keep on this. Okay, Bill, go ahead. Thanks, Lieutenant. Uh, where are you going now? Over to the Kowalskis. I want to have another talk with them. Well, check back as soon as you can. I will. And take it easy. <laughs> you worry too much. That was about noon. I went across the street to a cigar store and called the Kowalskis, but there wasn't any answer. So I went back to the walk-up on 135th Street and got Flo's last name from the janitor. It was Rusek, Polish like the Kowalskis. Then I walked across town to 132nd Street and sat on the steps of 195 to wait for Mama or Papa Kowalski to come back. One o'clock, nothing happened. Two o'clock, still nothing. Three o'clock. Four o'clock. Still nothing. The kids were playing one a cat and kicked a can in the street. Five or six little girls were jumping rope down the block. I wondered how Papa Kowalski felt coming home every night, walking up a block filled with kids playing games. It was a funny way to spend what might be my last day in the force. A little after five, I saw them coming up the street. They looked older and I remembered them and tired. But they nodded to the neighbors and talked to the kids and one little girl took Papa by the hand and walked halfway up the block with him. Kids can be awful cruel or awful kind. I was glad this one was kind. Ah, well, 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 Sergeant Harrigan. Hello, Mama. Hello, Papa. Oh, Sergeant, it's been so long. Yeah, Mama. Four or five years, I guess. Uh, it's good to see you, my son. <laughs> Thanks, Papa. But uh, why you sit here? I was waiting to see you. Oh, Papa, we are standing in the street. We've got to ask Sergeant Bill to house. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Hey, please, my son. Now you call me. Sure. Here, let me take that bundle. Oh, no, no. It's not Hey, come on. Manage. Come on. Give it here. <laughs> Always the old man <clears throat> Oh, how you say? Show off. Tack, this is it. <laughs> so now, <nice. laughs> in we go. Okay. You see, Mr. Archie, we have a surprise for you. Yeah? Do not tell him, Papa. What is it? Uh, you will see. Mama has apple cake? No, you will see. <laughs> oh. That's some crime, eh? Uh, Doc. We uh, got three more to go. Uh, what are we stopping for? Uh, <laughs> you do it, Mama. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> so. You moved downstairs. Yes, <laughs> there's no junk. Last year, Mr. Sosman says we too old to climb stairs. We must move down here. Come, Sergeant B. Well, yeah. that's something. So, now you sit down, and we will talk. Whew. Mama, make some coffee. Ah, uh, no, Mama, I don't have time. Uh, it does not take long. You come long. back in here. I want to talk to both of you. Uh, there uh -huh. is something wrong? No, I just want to talk to you. Hey, sit here, Mama. So? Now, my son? I, uh... I don't know how to say this. Is a botana. Yeah. I wish someday we could just sit down and talk about nothing. Seems like every time I see you, I, I bring back memories. 
We understand. You want to help. Yeah. We have said everything. I know, but I want to go over it all again. Maybe we missed something. Dobjik. We will try. Now, Anna went to school at PS 105, right? Dark. That's at 138th Street. Dark. She had to walk uptown five blocks and cross town three blocks. He's right. And you said, Mama, you taught her to go over 134th Street. Dark. There, there was not so many cars there. I, I thought she'd be safe here. It's possible. Why, why we must do this? I'm sorry, Papa. But you see, we got something new to work on. Always. It's like this. And there is nobody in jail. I know. This time it'll be different. It's, it's all right, Pop. So, Sergeant Bill. Let's see. But then you said she started going over 135th Street. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Negler opens his candy store after school. All the children stop there. Uh -huh. Now, do you remember Anna ever talking about anyone named Rusak? Rusak. Rusak. No? At least I have not here. <clears throat> Mama? No. No. Are you sure? Doc, this name I, I do not know. <sighs> well, that's that. I'm sorry, I... No, wait a minute. Yeah. Maybe she called her Florence or Flo. You ever hear those names? Florence? Flo? Uh, uh, Florence. Uh, this I know. What'd she say about her? Uh, uh, a new girl in Anna's class. Yes. Oh, Anna's class. No, that's not the one. She live on 136th Street. No, Mama, no, no, no. It's no use. Then she talk about other new friend. What? Doc. Other new friend? Who was it? Yes, it was Mr. Mr. Meeker. By the time I got to the junkyard, it was beginning to get dark. There was a light on in the shack, so I knew he was there. I hoped I could get up to the shack without being noticed, but the minute I stepped in the lot, the dog started barking. Then when I saw Meeker come out of the door and look around the yard, I knew there was nothing else to do, so I walked right up to him. Now, Henry, be quiet. You've really been most disagreeable all day, Henry. Now, go on, all of you. I don't want to hear another word of it. Oh, good evening, Sergeant. Please don't think unkindly of my family. They don't realize yet that you are a friend. Hello, Mr. Meeker. I suppose you've come back to see that poor little monkey. I want to talk to you. Oh, well, by, by all means, please come in. All right, Lily, get down off the chair. Let the sergeant sit down, will you? Go on, scat! <laughs> you know, she's really the worst behaved of the lot. Just plain selfish, that's all. Always has to sit on the sofa. That's not what I came to talk about. Oh, of, of course not. You know, I, I, I'm so used to being by myself that when I do get someone to talk to, I'm, I'm afraid I talk too much. Why, only the I want to talk to you about Anna Kowalski. I was talking to Flo, and she said if I was... Baker. What, Sergeant? What about little Anna Kowalski? I, I've never heard of Anna Kowalski. Why do you, you want to talk to me about someone I don't know? Why, That's not what I heard. What, Sergeant? I heard you knew her very well. My, my little friends will tell you that I've ne never Mrs. knew... Mrs. Kowalski told well, me. Well, I'm terribly sorry, but Mrs. Kowalski is wrong. She shouldn't have said a thing he like that. He said you knew Anna just before she was beaten to death. That's not true. You can ask Henry or George. Her arms were broken, just like that monkey's. They'll tell you it's not true because they're my friends and Where I... is the monkey? Well, now, you, you know... Where is it? You, you see, I, I can't stand seeing our little friends uh, cooped up, so I, 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 I took him out to the park uh, this afternoon. You're lying. No, no, I, I set him free in the park. You killed him just like you killed little Anna. That's not true. Why would I do such a thing? I love my little friends. You, you see, they don't like the way you're talking to me. Where's so the monkey? George wants me. I, I have to go to see what George... Come wants. back here, you. What is it, George? George! Come back, Maker. Where are you, George? George, where are you? Peter! Oh, there you are, my friend. Why, George, what's all this about now? You, you're always such a good boy. I, I don't understand. I, 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 just, I just don't understand. Sir. He's after something in that old car. Oh, why would he... 
No, you're wrong, Sergeant. There, there, there's nothing. There's nothing in, in the. Yeah. The monkey. Dead. <laughs> I did it. I did it. I. I tried to make friends with him, but he didn't like me. I tried so hard, Sergeant. I gave him bananas and peanuts, but he wouldn't like me. All my other friends liked me, but he didn't. I just couldn't stand it any longer. I wanted to hurt him. To hurt him. To hurt him. What about Anna? I, I, I used to wait for her to come home from school. Why? I, I wanted her to like me. I, I didn't want to hurt her. Go on. Then one day she said that she wasn't coming down my street anymore. And I knew she didn't like me. Yeah. It wasn't fair. She should have liked me. Then I I wanted to hurt her. I knew it wasn't right, but I wanted to hurt her. After I'd done it, I knew it wasn't right. But she should have liked me. So then you didn't trust people anymore. Just animals. Please. Little friends. Till the monkey came along and he was smarter than dogs and cats. He and... didn't like me. No. Uh, what... What will they do to me, Sergeant? Will they hurt me? No. I don't think so. They'll take you away and... put you in a place where you'll have food and bed. I don't want to go away. Who will take care of my friends? There's so much to do. Do I have to go, Sergeant? Sometimes I... I guess it's better that way. Title, East Side Beat, a story of the one thrilling moment in a man's life that can only be called high adventure. And heard in East Side Beat as Bill was Don Douglas with Wendell Holmes, Ross Martin, Mort Lawrence, Linda Watkins, and Bryna Rayburn. And next week, high adventure friends, we're proud to present a story of a man who lived a dream of hope and destruction. We like to call it metamorphosite. So until next weekend, metamorphosite, Look around you, wherever you are. Watch it, but don't live it. This thing we call high adventure. Remember next week, Metamorphosite, another high adventure story of action, which combined with a falcon and followed by Big Guy, forms a full hour and a half of mystery and adventure over NBC each week at this time. So stay with us now for Big Guy. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Most people are fast asleep in the wee hours of the morning. Most people, that is, with the exception of all-night disc jockeys, milkmen, and Charlie Wilde. Charlie Wilde is a new kind of private detective, a dauntless, debonair, and daring young man who hits his stride in the wee hours of the morning. Wilde makes his debut a little later this afternoon. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.